Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Strawberry Shortcake. That's right, I'm going to show you how I make this iconic summer dessert. And while I usually steal my recipes from complete strangers online, this time I'm ripping off my very own grandfather, who until recently I had no idea even baked. But anyway, there's no time to tell that story now. As usual, all will be revealed in the blog post. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and get started with the butter. And when you're doing shortcakes, there's two techniques you can use. You can cut your cold butter into the dry ingredients, like you've seen us do in other videos, like our buttermilk biscuits, for example. Or you can just use melted butter, which is what we're doing here. So we're going to melt half a stick of unsalted butter over medium heat in a small saucepan. And by the way, we're just not going to melt it. We're actually going to toast it a little bit. So what's going to happen is that butter's going to melt. And as we swirl that pan around, it's going to get a little bit foamy. That's totally normal. Nothing to be frightened of. And as we keep cooking that over medium heat, that light foamy stuff is going to kind of dissipate. And it will start looking more like this. And when it does get to this stage, we want to be very careful. We want to pay attention because we only want to toast this to a golden brown, which is going to give this a gorgeous, nutty, more complex flavor. But if you go too far, it could taste burnt. So be careful. We only want to do it until it looks like this. And by the way, for the record, this is my little addition to the family recipe. The original just called for plain melted butter, but I really do like what toasting the butter a little bit adds. So like I said, we'll toast that to a beautiful golden brown, and then we'll just remove it from the heat and reserve it until needed, which is only going to be a couple minutes, because the rest of this shortcake dough is very, very simple. And it starts with a bowl of self-rising flour, which as you know is nothing more than all-purpose flour that has baking powder and salt milled right into it. And as usual, in the ingredient list, I will tell you how to make your own, in case you can't find self-rising flour, which you can. And then to that, we're going to add some white sugar, and that's it for the dry ingredients. And yes, I know, according to bakers, sugar is considered a wet ingredient, but not by me. As far as I'm concerned, if you can't take a bath in it, it's not a wet ingredient. And then speaking of real wet ingredients, let's go ahead and add a couple of them now. So I'm going to add a little bit of heavy cream, as well as some whole milk. And if you want, you can just use all milk here. But we do have heavy cream around, because of course we are going to make whipped cream to top our shortcake. And then last but not least, we will pour in our lightly toasted butter, and then we'll immediately grab a spoon and mix this up, just until it comes together. And yes, it is true when it comes to making biscuits and shortcake, that if you cut in cold butter instead of stirring in warm butter, you will end up with something that has a little more of a delicate texture. Which is great if you're just going to eat one plain while sipping a cup of tea or something. But since our shortcakes are going to get smothered with juicy berries and whipped cream, I believe the slightly sturdier texture of this method is even better. And not to mention, of course, this is just way easier. But anyway, like I said, we're going to mix that with a spoon until it just comes together, and you end up with something that looks pretty close to this. And as soon as that happens, we'll kind of wad it up and transfer that to a floured surface, where we will press it down into some kind of rectangular shape approximately an inch thick. And sure, use a rolling pin if you want. But for me, some lightly floured hands work just as well. And once we have that pressed out into the appropriate thickness, which for me is about one knuckle high, we can go ahead and take our bench scraper and cut these into what are hopefully fairly evenly sized pieces. And if you want something super exact, we can score that first so that they do come out perfectly even. And of course the key with that technique is to score it in the right place. See that one wasn't even close because once again I'm looking in the viewfinder and not at the table. So I tried to erase it with my finger before making the cut in the right spot. So we kind of screwed that one up, but it's not a problem because we'll just turn that one over and no one will ever know unless they see the video. And by the way, as usual with these things, do not stress about any superficial imperfections, because once these are baked, they cannot help but look great. So no big deal. And once our shortcakes are cut, we will transfer those onto a Silpat line baking sheet. You can use parchment, but I do prefer the Silpat, because with all this butter and sugar, it can help prevent the bottoms from getting too brown. And then once we have those panned up, what we'll do is we'll brush the tops with a little bit of heavy cream, because we do want to finish these with the traditional dusting of sugar. And this step is optional, but I really must insist. Because as you'll see, it really does give the tops a gorgeous look. And then once we have our shortcakes creamed and sugared, they're ready to bake. So let's go ahead and transfer those into the center of a 425 degree oven for about 15 to 18 minutes, or until they've baked to a beautiful golden brown like this. And I'd like to think my grandfather is somehow looking down, saying something like, man, those look really, really good. Except what's up with toasting the butter? I never did that. Or something to that effect. But anyway, once those are baked, we will transfer those onto a rack to cool completely, at which point we can turn this shortcake into strawberry shortcake. And I'm assuming all of you know the rest of this recipe, but just in case you don't, all you need to do is take some fresh strawberries, which personally I have quartered, but you can slice them up any which way you want. And to that, we're gonna add some white sugar. And all we need to do is give that a stir until the sugar starts to dissolve. 
at which point we'll wrap it and stick it in the fridge for about an hour to an hour and a half or until those strawberries release all their amazing juices. And if you want, during that hour, it's not a bad idea to give them a stir once in a while. So this is what mine looked like after exactly one hour. So you can see the colors kind of darkened up a little bit and we have lots of accumulated juices in the bottom of the bowl. So not only does the sugar provide obvious sweetness, but it actually helps extract the juice from the strawberries. And I think that happens because of, I don't know, molecules? I'm sure it's fascinating. But all we need to worry about is that if you mix sugar with strawberries and let them sit in the fridge for about an hour, they'll look like this. And once our fruit is ready, we are ready to build our strawberry shortcake. So we'll take one of our sweet biscuits and split it in half, and we will spoon over our strawberries. And do not be shy with those juices. We want to give that bottom half a pretty good soaking. So we will spoon in our strawberries. We will top with the other half of the shortcake. And then of course spoon some more berries over that. And by the way, I kept this recipe very, very traditional. But some people do like to sneak a little bit of lemon juice into the strawberry mixture, or even a couple drops of balsamic vinegar. I've actually tried that before, it's very good. But of course, those kind of variations are up to you. You guys are the drakes of your strawberry shortcakes. Speaking of which, we started from the bottom, now we're here. Which means we're ready for the dollop of whipped cream. Real, homemade whipped cream. I mean seriously, what kind of psychopath is going to make this from scratch and then put store-bought whipped topping on this? That would be nothing less than a crime against nature. And then I'm going to garnish with a sprig of mint, which I know a lot of people consider an inedible cliché. But what they're missing is that it not only looks good, the aroma of fresh mint has been scientifically proven to elevate people's moods. Of course, having said that, I'm going to remove it. You guys know I have a problem eating on camera, so I don't need any obstacles. Don't worry, I'll smell it later. Plus, I was already in a good mood. So I'm going to grab a spoon and dig right in. And do I actually need to explain how awesome this is? I mean, come on, we have that subtly sweet, buttery biscuit soaked with those perfectly ripe, juicy strawberries and fresh homemade whipped cream. How is that not going to be incredible? And above and beyond its gorgeous looks and great taste and texture, it really is an extremely simple recipe to make. So there are many mysteries in life, like people using whipped cream out of a can, for example. But one thing that's absolutely no mystery at all is why, next to ice cream, this is America's most popular summertime dessert. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.